All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on preventing strains and sprains from manual materials handling and construction. Uh, my name is Jessica Bunting, and I'm the CPWR host and uh, sort of tech support for today's event. So before we get started on the presentation, I just want to go over a few things. Um, first of all, if you're having any technical difficulties, um, you can just either chat me um, on your screen um, through WebEx, or you can email me at jbunting at cpwr.com. I put that in the chat box um, in case you need it. And uh, you can also just respond to any of the WebEx emails you received, including the reminder that went out an hour ago, um, and that'll come directly to me. Um, if you're having trouble hearing through your computer speakers at any point, we recommend calling in using your phone instead, and that call-in information can be found um, on the event info tab on uh, your current screen or in any of the WebEx emails you received. We will take time at the end of today's presentation to answer questions. You can enter questions at any time, however, in the Q&A box, um, and we will do our best to answer all of them at the end. Finally, today's webinar will be recorded, and the link will be emailed to everyone automatically um, within a few days, along with a PDF of the slides and any related resources that we review uh, during the event today. Our presenters are John Strand, Social Marketing Consultant, Gary Gustafson, Director of CPWR's Environmental Hazard Training Program, and Eileen Beatty, Director of CPWR's Research to Practice Program. And Eileen, I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Jessica. So today we're going to briefly introduce a new program to prevent strain and sprain injuries associated with manual materials handling. We're currently piloting this program with a small group of contractors in order to get direct feedback on what's helpful, what's missing, and what needs to be improved so that our final program provides the industry with the resources needed to reduce injuries. Um, this program was developed by a community of practice that includes researchers, insurers, and industry stakeholders. And as Jessica mentioned, I'm joined today by John Strand and Gary Gustafson, who are two of the people that have been part of this effort. John's going to provide some background, and then Gary and I will briefly describe the program and how you can help with the pilot and access the material. So with that, I'll turn things over to John. Thanks, Eileen, and good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as background, this project began, came about because sprain and strain injuries particularly those resulting from manual materials handling, are a seri serious and growing problem for the construction industry. These types of industries result in a significant number of days away from work and lost productivity. They're a leading cause of disabling injuries, and they create a financial burden for contractors' businesses and for the injured workers. Even though research exists on ways to prevent these injuries, use of the research findings and the solutions has not been widespread by contractors. So to understand why, CPWR conducted surveys and interviews with contractors to learn about the barriers to engaging in safer practices and what motivated contractors who did engage in these safer practices to do so and how they did it. Next slide, Gary. So we learned that there are gaps in awareness of the risks, the solutions, and the benefits of using the solutions, that contractors do not always have the time to find material weights, lifting and options and storage options. And while some contractors plan at some point in a project for how materials will be lifted and moved, many don't do this throughout a project's life cycle, and some say they lack the experience or the resources to carefully plan for materials handling. Next slide, please. We also learned that contractors who overcame these barriers were motivated to do so to prevent injuries and a result, result avoid higher insurance costs, to improve productivity because if less time is spent moving materials around, there's more time for productive work and workers are less fatigued, both factors that help keep projects on schedule. And they also are, were interested in increasing their chances of winning new work and attracting and retaining workers by having a reputation as a safe company. One thing these contractors had in common, regardless of their size or, the tr or their trade, was that they all plan for how materials will be handled because it's good business practice. And instead of approaching planning for materials handling as a separate safety activity, 
these contractors integrate it into their ongoing operations from the time they prepare to bid on a project to before the project starts, and then each day on the job. And finally, they tend to review what worked well or didn't at the end of a project. Next slide, please. So the resulting best built plans program was designed to provide contractors with the resources to overcome the barriers identified and to position safety, in this case, reducing the risk for manual materials handling injuries as a core pillar of business success. Next slide. So rather than focus on just what the contractor should do, the program includes resources for everyone involved in materials handling, from the new worker entering the industry to the contractor. These include a site planning tool to help contractors integrate safer materials handling into every part of the business plan over the life cycle of the project, interactive training and coaching resources to reinforce the value of following safe practices, and infographics that highlight the business benefits of reducing manual materials handling and to reinforce those safe practices. All of these materials are free and easy to access and use. Next slide. This slide shows four of the nine infographics. The two top ones focus on best built plans as an important part of a safety program. The lower left is the first of five that highlight safer manual materials handling practices, and the fourth one emphasizes the importance of planning for safety. These can be used in social media, in presentation as handouts, or blown up as posters and displayed in areas where company employees will see them. These resources all reinforce information in the planning tool and other resources that Eileen and Gary will cover for you now. Eileen? So, thanks, John. So while all of the resources um, that we've, we have in this program are available online, uh, I just want to point out that since the training and coaching resources are interactive, that portion of our program is only available as part of the downloadable PC-based program. Um, you can download it from our website, but um, only the planning resources are available both directly online and as part of the downloadable. Uh, package of materials. So this is uh, the main screenshot from from the downloadable um, program. Since it, I'm going to focus on this and use these screenshots since they encompass all of the elements. So if we can go to the um, next slide, slide, I'm going to walk you through the planning uh, portion of the program, and then Gary's going to walk through the training and coaching resources. So the planning tools main page includes information on why it's a good business practice to reduce manual materials handling, brief instructions on how to use the tool, and links to resources to help you plan at each project stage. And there are four stages, and for each one there's a brief explanation for why it's important to plan for materials handling at that stage, questions and actions to consider, and resources that can help you develop and implement your plan. So the bidding section, um, includes access to examples of common building materials and their weight, uh, commercially available options for storing materials, different types of lifting equipment, um, including low-cost ones to more expensive motorized options, and a workbook with a planning worksheet for this stage of the project. Uh, this slide gives you a sense of what the material storage lifting um, worksheets look like and the types of information they contain. This is just to give you an idea. I realize that it's difficult to see on your, your, um, on your slide. So at the top of each spreadsheet, there's a note that we're planning to update these spreadsheets with new options moving forward, and there's a link to where you'll be able to find the updated information. I just want to point out that we don't endorse any products. The purpose of these worksheets and their content is to let contractors quickly see some of the different options that are available. The planning workbook is available in, as an Excel file that you can save and modify to meet your company's needs. The first page explains how it works and links to individual worksheets to use when preparing your bid, once you've been awarded the work and when the job's underway. If you already have a system for calculating what you'll need to store or lift and move materials, then you don't need these worksheets. Um, this resource is for contractors who don't have a system in place right now. Also, you don't need to use all three of the worksheets, but if you do, key information that's filled in for one project stage 
automatically carries forward um, in the worksheets for the next project stage. So this slide shows the main page for the pre-job section of the planning tool, and it includes all the resources that were available in the bidding section, if you haven't already accessed them then, and, and then it includes the pre-job um, planning worksheet. This section also has recommended steps and questions to consider at this, this stage, such as which employees will be responsible for coordinating where materials will be delivered and stored, and it introduces the need to train staff on materials handling practices and provides access to different types of training resources, including a toolbox talk and related micro games that Gary will talk about a little bit later. All of the training resources that are included are list available in English and Spanish, except for the supervisor form and training from CPWR's Foundations for Safety and Leadership Program. We're currently in the process of having the FSL program translated, and so it should be available in about a month or so. Um, this is the main page of the on-the-job section, which again has recommended steps to follow and resources to help a company implement their materials handling plan once the project's underway. In addition to the training materials and planning workbook that were available in the previous stages, at this stage you can also access um, a daily man materials handling checklist. And this next slide uh, shows you uh, what the checklist looks like. It had to be split on into two columns to fit on the screen, but it's in a Word document so the you, you don't need any special software to use it, and you can modify it and adapt it for your company's project. project. And finally, um, there's a look back section, and this section includes steps and questions to consider when your project's wrapping up. Um, and this step is intended to help you identify what you did that worked well or didn't work so well so that you can learn from it and apply it to future projects. So this is a really quick overview of the planning tool, and now Gary will introduce the remaining resources that are a part of the program, the training and coaching resources. So Gary? Oh, thanks, Eileen. Um, as Eileen mentioned, both the training resources and the coaching sections have hands-on interactive features, which is why they're only uh, PC-based. And I do want to reiterate that they are only PC. They're not available uh, for the Apple platform. Uh, while an individual worker could use these interactive resources as a refresher on their own, they're really intended to be used in a classroom environment with workers to teach, reinforce, and demonstrate their role in planning for how materials will be handled and to introduce safe practices to reduce their risk for injury. The training resource section has an, has an audio uh, voiceover that reads the information on the screen and will walk a user through each activity. This slide shows the introductory text that the narrator would read. The first item on the menu bar on the top of the screen is called Site Planning. This section focuses on the types of things a worker would find on a site where the contractor has planned to reduce manual materials handling. As you can see, the list of planning items includes delivery, storage, material weights, equipment, and a clear pathway. If you click on an item on the screen, in this case, the stored uh, lumber, a box appears that describes why storing materials off the ground will help reduce the risk of injury. If you click on the equipment button on the menu bar, examples of common lifting equipment appears. And as you click on each piece of equipment, an explanation of its use pops up. This screenshot shows what happens if you click on the hand truck. Clicking on the lifting option on the menu bar will take you to a page that explains what leads to lifting injury, injuries and how they can be prevented. And clicking on the red arrow takes you to demonstrations of four safe lifting practices. This slide only shows you one example of the four. Once you complete the demonstrations, you get a chance to try out what you learn by going through a series of exercises and, select, and selecting different options. This slide shows a couple of interactive examples. As you go through these exercises, you will receive reminders of safe lifting practices. The final section of the training is called coaching. This focuses on what's happening with your body during warm-up stretches and lifting. 
Like the training resources, the coaching ones are also interactive. You can watch a demonstration or go ahead and try it for yourself by using the cursor to move the body part, uh, use, by moving the part of the body involved in the exercise or lifting activities. You receive th uh, feedback throughout. And, and for the lifting, getting close and foot position activities, you can see the part of the body that experiences the physical strain when the figure doesn't follow a safer practice. So that's an overview of the interactive PC-based training and coaching resource. As Eileen mentioned earlier, the training materials available through the planning, planning tool also include a toolbox talk and hazard alert card and micro games linked to these materials, which are available both in English and Spanish. The screen, uh, the screen above shows the toolbox talk. You'll notice there's a QR code where the, arrow, the yellow arrow is. After the toolbox talk is conducted, workers can scan the QR code and download and play the micro games during lunch or breaks or any off time uh, that they have. The idea is to tap into the generation of workers that grow up playing games and use these games to reinforce the safety message. Both games are available for the iOS and Android systems. There are two games. The first is Lift Coach, Plan Your Route. This game lets the worker decide how they're going to lift and move a material. For example, they'll decide if they're going to lift it on their own or get help from another person or, or a piece of equipment. The mirror on the side shows how their decisions are impacting their body. As the player moves through the game, the scenes change and the job sites become more complex. And this slide is just showing you representation screens of the actual game that's, that's being played. The other game is called Lift Coach, Plan Your Lift. It focuses on reinforcing safe lifting practices and the importance of staying focused when lifting and moving materials. The strain bar at the top will register the strain that results from not engaging in safer lifting practices. Eileen, back to you. So thanks, Gary. So in putting this program together, um, what we're, what we're trying to do is fill some gaps that we heard from contractors where they, where they need help or where they need additional resources. Um, but as I said at the beginning, this is just a pilot at this point, so we're very interested in getting feedback. So um, all of the resources that Gary and I have gone through and that John mentioned are available at www.bestbuiltplans.org. And as I mentioned earlier, you can download the PC-based um, program from this website, and it's free, or you can um, also access all of the site planning resources um, directly online if you, uh, where it says click here to access the site planning tool online, if you click there, it takes you into all of those materials. Um, so then if we go to the next slide, we're, we're right now, as I said, in the pilot, and we're we're asking people for help. So we currently have a small group of insurance companies and contractors that are helping us by actually using the materials on projects between now and next July. And they're providing us with direct feedback on what works, what could be improved, um, what needs to be added. And so you can help us in this um, effort by being part of that pilot, or you can just um, use the materials direct, directly and provide us um, with feedback through an online survey that you can find on that main page of the bestbuiltplans.org section. Um, one of um, the things that helps us, one of the reasons we're doing it in both of these ways is because these types of injuries are so prevalent in the, in the industry, we didn't want to delay getting resources into the hands of contractors and workers that might help reduce the injuries. But we really appreciate the help of, of those contractors that are participating in the pilot um, because they're really providing us with um, feedback that we can count on. They're, they've agreed to use the materials over the next 12 months. So we, we think we'll get some very valuable insights from them. 
Um, so our goal in collecting all of this user feedback is so that we can improve the program and develop one that at the end of the day really is helpful and motivates um, contractors and their employees to engage in safer practices and reduce injuries. So at this point, um, we can open it up for any questions anyone has. All right, thank you to all of our speakers. Um, we have been getting some questions coming in, so I'll start going down the list. Um, the, let's see, the first one is, um, is there a plan or timeline for making this program available for Max? Um, right now, we don't, we don't have that. We would, we'll probably look into that once um, we've gone through this pilot effort. And so the pilot's underway for the next 12 months. Um, once we complete the pilot, find out areas that we need to approve, um, that's something that we can uh, definitely consider. So, but, but I just want to point out that all of the planning resources are available for your use for either Mac or, um, I mean, they're, they're just available to you. So they'll work on, on either a Mac or a PC-based. It's only the, the training and coaching resources that right now are only PC-based. Um, the next question, I believe, is about the uh, presentation we're doing right now. Um, it says, this is excellent material. Is the slide program available as a PDF so I can share with my two colleagues who could not make it? And I'll just go ahead and answer that. Um, I will email everyone um, who registered a recording of the full webinar as well as a PDF of the slides so that you can share it with any colleagues. Um, it, I should get that out uh, definitely by the end of the week. Um, the next question is where do I access the programs and lifting worksheets? I don't know if you shared a URL in the slides at all. I, um, I did. If, if we can go back to um, slide uh, 26, um, you can access them all here. And there are two ways. You can go directly with this URL at the top of the screen or um, if you go to CPWR's uh, main web page, you can access it through there, too. Okay. Is there a cost associated with these tools? No. The, um, we, are, um, uh, we work under an IASH grant um, and, a, and an NIHS grant, and so everything that we produce here is free. Um, does this program provide specific stretching exercises for a given type of work? Is stretching a proven method to prevent these injuries? Gary, do you want to answer that one? Sure. So uh, the, the answer to your question is no. There, there are no specific stretches for a lifting activity. They are general conditioning uh, suggestions or recommendations just to prepare uh, someone to, you know, for any activities that they may engage in during the day. So, um, it, and, and as for uh, any documentation as to um, their effectiveness, uh, again, they're not designed to answer any specific lifting uh, scenario, just as a general conditioning so workers are, um, you know, their bodies are warmed up in order to engage in their daily activities. Okay. Um, I got a couple um, additional questions about availability. Um, so just to reiterate what Eileen was saying, it, the um, everything that was shared today is currently available, and it's currently available for free. Um, it, it may uh, be updated after the pilot, but, but no, you do not have to wait a full year for the uh, products to be available. Um, another question about content, um, is there advice on how to do two-person lifts and carries? So, um, there, Let's see, I'm trying to see. We do have um, information on the er ergonomic section of our website um, that has information on using two man lift teams. We, we have had some researchers who have done work on this in the past, and there's a video. And um, what I can do is 
is make sure that, um, you know, that's a good suggestion. I can make sure that somehow um, on this web page we link to additional information um, that reinforces or that, that can help uh, reinforce some of the, act, the activities and the work practices. Um, so there, we do have information on that. Um, what I'll try and do is make it more explicit on our website where to find it. Uh, can you provide more detail on what's involved in being a participant in the pilot project uh, as far as meetings and reports to be completed? Okay, so briefly, um, what we're asking contractors who are being part of the pilot to do is um, to take an anonymous baseline survey so that we get a sense of current practices and what they plan, plan to use um, from these materials. Um, and I'm saying that it's anonymous because what we're doing is we don't ask for your name, we don't ask for your company name, but we're taking that and aggregating all that information together. So there's a baseline survey, a survey at the midpoint, and a survey at the end of the, um, that it will take will administer next July. Um, in between, because when people get busy, it's easy to put things aside or, or you know, maybe run, someone might run into a problem using one of the materials and, you know, we may not hear about it promptly. We, if there's any problem, we'd like to correct it promptly. So in addition to the three surveys, which would be at the beginning, the midpoint, about six months in and, in, and the final one in July, we're, we're asking to have two just quick touch base calls with the participant for the very reason of to find out did they, you know, is something missing that we might be able to address now? Do they have um, difficulty using one of the resources and a suggestion for how we might fix it? Um, and just to get a general, you know, a general sense of, of their experience to date. Okay. Um, what is the name of the app to download the game on iOS? Um, you, Mary, can you do this one? Sure. Um, the easiest way to um, find it on the – I'm I'm, a, I'm an Apple guy, so um, – is to look for um, SimCoach, to go through the, the developer is uh, SimCoach, S-I-M-C-O-A-C-H, and they will, um, you'll find the game through them. Uh, the other way to do it is just to do a Google search for best, best built plans and use uh, the game names Lift Planning or Plan Your, uh, plan your uh, Lift, and that will then get you a link to, I believe that gets you a link to the, uh, both the Android as well as the iOS or the Apple platform. Okay, and, and I just to add to that as part of the planning tool in, um, in the stage where the training resources are available, there's a link um, or one of the items has a list of links to the Android and the different um, platforms to finding the game. Great. Um, if an employee completes this course, um, will he or she receive a certificate of some sort? No, that, that would be uh, dependent on your own company policy, but uh, CPWR will not be issuing any type of completion uh, certificate. Okay. Um, being under a NIOSH grant, is this a public domain or is it under copyright? Um, these materials are all available um, for, for your use, so they're in the public domain. Um, would there be any problem using this program at a Carpenters JATC training center? Absolutely not. We encourage we encourage everyone to use it. So please feel free to, to um, disseminate the information to any any organization that uh, you work with. 
Um, this isn't a question, but uh, one of our attendees just searched Lyft Coach and she confirmed that the two apps came right up. Um, next question, uh, is the pilot project geared to contractors only or are you looking for others to participate such as ergonomists, insurance companies, et cetera? Um, we do have some insurance, I mentioned earlier that we have um, some insurance companies that are, have actually been working with us and um, they're acting as, as an intermediary. So they've identified um, clients that have volunteered to be part of the program. And so for the things like the make the touch base, so they're, they're interacting directly with their clients and providing these, these materials and, you know, giving them the link to the, the baseline and the other surveys and holding the, the midpoint calls with them. Um, so we do have, have insurance companies that are participating in that way and we welcome it. We have um, another insurance company that is just making the resources available directly to their clients so they're not um, part of the pilot but they're helping us to get the information out there to people. Um, we have our core um, community of practice that we put together that help develop these materials includes um, ergonomists. So, you know, we welcome feedback from everyone um, on this. I, I hope that answers the question. And, and to the person who, who downloaded the um, games, I'm glad it worked. It's always nice when that works when we're in the middle of a presentation. <laughs> um, and Eileen, uh, if this person is interested in participating in the pilot or if anyone has feedback, uh, is the easiest thing to just email you directly or how would you um, like everyone to handle that? Yeah, you're welcome to just email me directly. Um, my email address is is on um, the presentation. So if you email me and if you could CC Grace Bartlett, Bartlett who's also um, on this last slide, that would be very helpful in that way. We'll make sure that one of us gets back to you. Okay, great. Um, just a few more questions. The next one is, what information are you planning to include about exoskeletons? You know, at this point, um, because that's a, an emerging technology, we don't have any information in this program about it. Um, potentially, as time goes on, we, we will add additional information. Uh, but for this next 12-month period, uh, we probably won't be, be adding additional information on that. Now, on CPWR's website, we do um, we're always adding um, information on new research that's coming out. And so as new research comes out about exoskeletons, we'll be adding that to our overall website. And there's an ergonomic section of our website where it will be found. Okay. Have you considered adding a guide for conducting participatory ergonomics for job-specific problems, problem solving, and a repository of <coughs> lift hacks? I'm sorry, what was the last word? A repository for? Of uh, quote unquote lift hacks. Like H A C K S. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what a lift hack is, so I apologize. But we do have um, on our website a repository for different kinds of ergonomic resources and materials. Um, so there may be something that may be what you're thinking what you have in mind, and, and we do have that already developed, and it is broken down by uh, types of injuries um, and types of work to the extent that we can. Uh, um, if you go to our website under research, um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up quickly myself. Uh, it would be Um, it's, it's called Construction Ergonomics Research and Solutions. It's under our Research to Practice Library. So um, if you take a look at that and if that's not what you had in mind, let me know. I'd be interested in your thoughts on other ideas. All right. Um, I believe that was the last question. Um, and thank you, everyone, who just sent some positive 
feedback. I'm not going to read that out loud, but if I did actually miss a question, um, uh, please just follow up via email and we'll be happy to answer those. Um, oh, and then in follow-up to uh, the question that was just asked and answered, um, the respondent said, uh, thank you, the equipment list is terrific, and um, she was asking more about ways of engaging workers in problem solving and then making their ideas available to others. So um, we'll follow up on, on that final one. Okay. Um, all right, and as I said uh, previously, I will be emailing out a PDF of, of the slides um, and as well as a recording of this presentation, and I'll include the URL to access all of these materials. Um, so thank you for uh, joining everyone, and thank you to all of our presenters. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, everyone.